what's up everybody it's ryan with rng products and welcome back to the workshop i don't think it's going to be a big secret what today's project is but with that being said i'm really excited to share it with you guys i've always had a passion for cooking and these are some of my favorite tools to use they're basically a combination between a spoon and a spatula now I originally went ahead and glued up these two uh, pieces right here and I was going to make two more spoons that were semi similar to the two that you see right here. But I had this crazy idea. I've always wanted to make some type of an ingrain project. So what I'm actually gonna do today is take these two pieces that I've already glued up. I'm gonna joint one edge here so I got a nice smooth glue up. And I'm actually gonna combine these two and then we're gonna take it over to the table saw and we're gonna cross cut it. And then we're gonna glue that back up and then we should have a crazy ingrain pattern and we're gonna try to make uh, some spoons. So let's make it guys. Now since I had previously glued up these two pieces, all I needed to do here was run each piece through the jointer to get a nice flush straight edge for my glue up. Now anytime I'm doing a glue up, I like to use this uh, butcher paper and put down over my workbench so that I don't get any squeeze out on the bench. And since this will be used in the kitchen, I'm just using Tight Bond 3 for the glue and I'm making sure I put a liberal amount on so I don't have any issues. Sometimes with these smaller glue ups, the boards like to bow out on you. So right here, I just cut some scrap pieces of pine and clamp those down on the edge pieces to keep everything straight and aligned. Just be sure you clean up the excess glue before clamping the pine boards down or you might have a little bit of a challenge getting those off once the uh, glue's set up. And since you already have the water and wet rag out, you might as well clean up the excess squeeze out which will make cleanup after unclamping much quicker and easier. Since I needed to wait for the glue to dry, I decided now would be a great time to make my poor man's cross cut sled since I don't have one. I simply grabbed a spare piece of poplar ran it through my jointer and quickly checked it with some aluminum T-square to make sure it was nice and flat. Then simply used some basic clamps and clamped it down to the miter gauge that came with my table saw. Now once I had this all clamped in place, I went ahead and grabbed a 90 and made sure that it was perfectly square to the saw blade. Now I noticed on my last project that my table saw blade was really on its last leg and since I was still waiting for that glue to dry I decided to go ahead and change that blade out and put in a really nice Diablo 50 tooth multi cut blade. Now that our glue has dried, let's go ahead and remove the piece from these pipe clamps. And since we took the time to clean up the glue while it was wet, it's a very minimal cleanup. Here I just use a scraper and a small chisel to clean off any remaining excess glue. I quickly squared up both ends of the blank before running it through the planer. Now keep in mind, we just need to take some real light passes and clean up the little bit of excess glue. My current glue up measured 5 eighths of an inch and that was the perfect thickness I needed. So here I simply marked 5 eighths on one end, brought it over to the poor man's cross cut sled and then got everything aligned and squared up. In order to make repeatable cuts, I simply grabbed another scrap piece of wood and used those two spring clamps to make a stop. And remember, woodworking isn't always about having the best tools, it's always about having the best ideas and figuring out ways to be creative and get the job done and safely, of course. <laughs> Continued ripping these pieces down till I got to where it was going to be unsafe or uncomfortable. I kind of like all five fingers, so I switched over to my micro ripper and ran the last cut through the saw. The original plan here was to make an ingrain spoon, but once I had ripped these pieces down and flipped them over, I did a quick comparison and decided that I did not like the darkness of the ingrain and went ahead and stuck with the side grain. 
Now, anytime you try to glue up a bunch of small pieces and keep a pattern, it can be quite challenging. So I spent a little extra time with my setup. I dropped two bench dogs in, and then I used these clamps at a real nice flat surface area, although they're not my favorite clamps. Once I had all my pieces aligned on the clamp, I went ahead and started the glue up. Now, since we are putting the glue on the end grain, I really made sure to put a liberal amount. I definitely took my time and made sure that I had each piece squared up to one another to keep that nice pattern. And in order to prevent any type of deflection, you're gonna wanna gently snug each clamp alternately. If you get too aggressive, you risk losing your pattern alignment. Once I had it gently clamped up, I went ahead and grabbed a wet rag and cleaned up the excess squeeze out. Once again, I wanted to prevent any type of bowing in the wood, so I simply grabbed a scrap piece of walnut that I had around and applied a liberal amount of paste wax to the bottom side. Although I had cleaned up the excess glue, I barely have these pieces clamped in, and once I really apply the pressure, I will get more squeeze out, so the paste wax will prevent that piece of walnut from sticking. And as you can see, I did have a problem with these clamps. As soon as I applied a good amount of pressure, it started twisting on me, and I just knew that these clamps would not work for this job. I went ahead and got a set of my pipe clamps and got everything nice and tight. Once I had those secure, I grabbed another piece of scrap wood and knocked everything down nice and flush. If you're walking. Once my glue had set up, I was able to remove everything from the clamps, and as you can see, that paste wax worked perfect. And right back to the planer we go, and just like before, we're gonna be taking very light passes. Now we've spent a lot of time getting to this point. If your blades are dull in the planer, I would highly recommend you change those out. Now's not the time that you wanna have an issue. Once you're satisfied with the thickness of your workpiece, now the fun part. Grab your favorite spatula or spoon and simply trace it onto the workpiece. If you don't have one to trace, you can always find something online, download it, and then trace it onto your workpiece. Also, don't be afraid to freehand. One of my favorite things about a project like this, every spoon turns out different, even when starting with a template. Once you have a pattern you're happy with, take it over to the bandsaw and start cutting it out. Now, if you don't have a bandsaw, you could always improvise and use something else like a jigsaw. When cutting your design out, just remember to cut on the outside of the lines. You're gonna wanna sand it down to the line. If you cut inside of the line, it's gonna be a lot harder to clean that up. Now the fun part, sanding, and I mean, lots of sanding. Now I actually enjoy this part of the process as there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's your own artistic interpretation of how you think the spatula should turn out. And nothing breaks up the monotony of sanding when you have a little shop visitor. And back to sanding, more sanding, and more sanding. Now that you have your basic shape, go ahead and take the spatula, turn it on its side, and trace your final pattern. I found that with my particular bandsaw, I was much better off making a series of small relief cuts and then coming back and turning the spatula on its side and removing the excess material. This is definitely an area of my shop that I would really like to upgrade in the future. And you guessed it, sanding, more sanding, and more sanding. However, this part of the process is actually really satisfying as you're finally starting to see your spatula take on its final shape. Now definitely take your time here and don't rush it. You don't wanna get that spatula too thin. And with any wood project like this, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So it's totally up to you 
what type of decorative flares you would like to add to the spatula. I personally found that adding these little grooves on the top, bottom, and side really enhanced the overall look of these spatulas. <laughs> with a little 220 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander, I started the process of my final sanding. Once I completed the sanding, I moved on to the next step, and this is very important. You're gonna to wanna to treat these spoons just like a cutting board, and I'm just using some water in a spray bottle, and I'm wetting the spoons. That way I can raise the grain. I'll set these aside, let them dry, and then when I come back, you can actually feel the raised rough surface. Then we're gonna put another final sanding with 220. Then we'll be ready to put some food safe mineral oil on the spoons. If you don't do this important step, the very first time someone uses your spoon or spatula and it gets wet, that grain will raise and it'll feel rough in the hands. Hey guys, now we're getting really close to wrapping this project up and I know you're probably dying to see the finished product, but really quick, I just wanna thank all my supporters. This channel's growing very slowly and I'm grateful for that. So if you're already subscribed to the channel, be sure you click the notification bell. And if you wanna do me a really big favor and smash that like button, that's gonna really help get this video shared and grow the channel, which is gonna allow me to bring more content like this your way. I've got some more cool shop projects coming up. Uh, I actually just picked up a really new piece of equipment in my shop. I'll give you kind of a hint. You might be able to see it in this frame so be on the lookout for new shop tools I'm gonna to do a video on that as well so without further ado let's throw the final finishing touches on these spoons and let me know what you guys think put a comment down below thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next video